Welcome to Vivi Talks. I'm Vivian Arts. Join me in celebrating 100 talented female musicians from my last album, Type of Thing. Empowering female cacao farmers in Congo's Virunga State Park and restoring the rainforest. Delve into the musical journeys, creative processes, and unique perspectives of these talented women that were involved in the making of this album. Today I'm talking to Issa Reina. Itzel Reina is a saxophone player, producer and composer from Mexico City. She was awarded the first ever Latin Grammy Prodigy Scholarship in partnership with the pop star Enrique Iglesias. She has recorded several albums as a sideman and performed professionally in Boston, Mexico City and New York. She is a Berklee College of Music alumni and current alumni ambassador for the Latin Grammy Cultural Foundation in Miami. Itzel Reina has written music for Arsenal Chronica festival exhibits as well as for digital media art installations. Listen to our conversation as we talk about the role of AI and NFT in the music industry and how she became a saxophone player and how she is thriving in her life and work as a professional musician. So welcome Itzel to my official podcast. Um, I'm very excited to talk with you because we don't know each other very well and I love to learn everything about what you do and where you're from and so for starters um, tell me where you're from and what do you do? (laughs) Yeah so thank you for having me uh it's a, it's a pleasure to be here uh yeah so i'm originally from mexico city i grew up here uh, and when i was a teenager i really became like very interested on on music out of nowhere because none of my family are like musicians or anything mm-hmm. uh and I became like very interested specifically on on the saxophone. So I really wanted like to have a saxophone and start like like learning without any expectations of or like I want to become a musician or anything, just like as a hobby at first. Uh, and I guess that's where everything started. And yeah, now I'm a professional yeah sax saxophone player mainly, and now I produce also, so I do. Well, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> oh, do you remember what was the first time you saw a saxophone? Because it's really not common to, as a as a young kid, to think, oh, I want to play saxophone. If, yeah. you, if you're apparently not surrounded with with that, right? It may be more logic to say, oh, I'm going to be singing or I'm going to play piano because they they you find pianos pretty much everywhere. So how how why the saxophone? What happened? Where did you see it? <laughs> <laughs> I, I I actually do remember because I went with my brother like to a to a theater and they were like a like a movie theater and they were like a screening like a live a concert recorded of the DC Gillespie United Nations Orchestra nice. uh, with a very young Danilo Perez actually yes. <laughs> yes so I was so impressed by the by jazz in general I guess it was the first time ever that I was like close to to that kind of music and I was just like what is that like I, I like I, I do remember actually like that night going out from there from that and just be like I want to know like like what is this thing called music and jazz and musicians like I didn't understand like improvisation back then of course like mm-hmm. but it was like very I was very curious it was like a mysterious thing for me um and yeah and after that I guess I just started like listening jazz uh, and from all the instruments the sound of the saxophone was was very like beautiful to me and I was like that's that's like because it's similar to the voice also kind of mm-hmm. I guess so yeah so that's where it started and then I just wanted to have like a like a saxophone and my family was like what <laughs> uh, and yeah did you get um, to the tenor right away or you started on a lighter uh, on the tenor actually yeah like uh, I wanted to play tenor like I didn't at first I I didn't want to play alto I was like no 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 I want to play tenor <laughs> and everyone was like like m- musicians that I start meeting they were like you should get an alto like it's better like for s- to start mm-hmm. with an alto like mm-hmm. I don't know what that that's a lot of people say that 
but I was very stubborn, I guess. <laughs> I was like, no, I want to play the tenor saxophone. Uh, and yeah, so I did, and, and yeah, that's how it how it started. <laughs> and then eventually, you went to B Berkeley, right? You you studied, yeah. you went to study there. How was that? Yeah, so I studied first at Mexico because uh, mm -hmm. after it became like 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 the face of a hobby, I was like, because I was in high school, I was like, maybe I could pursue like a musical thing. I don't mm -hmm. know. And I really didn't want to like to study something else. I was like, so maybe I can try it. Uh, but there wasn't like, uh, like a jazz school in Mexico that I was like excited about or that was like more like a formal study. It mm -hmm. was more like little schools with diplomas, but not right. like the actual degree. Um, so with the sax teachers that I had like private lessons, they suggest me to go to the National School of Music, UNAM, uh, to pursue like a musical degree but it was in classical music and I was like hesitant but mm. yeah I, then I was like I should do it because even if it's not jazz I can learn scales and technique and the fundamentals of to be a musician and breathe because I I really didn't know how to read like when I started of course uh, and so I did and I did the my exam uh, I didn't get get it the first time, <laughs> so I had to spend like an extra year, like really studying, like very hard, and then uh -huh. I, I I I I get in, uh, and so I I was there like for three years studying classical music, uh, alto mainly, uh, but there was like a jazz workshop on the weekends that I used to go there, and yeah, but. I, I always wanted like to go to Berkeley. So like I was at school, but I was like, my dream is like just to go to Berkeley. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> and then what what year did you did you go to Berkeley? I went, uh, so Berkeley came to Mexico in 2014, I believe, uh -huh. for the first Berkeley Latino program. So uh -huh. they did like a one week program and uh -huh. A friend told me like you should go. I know you want to go to Berkeley, and I was like, I don't know. I don't like. I like. I'm not very good at playing like Latin music, even though I'm Mexican. <laughs> uh, like I, I don't have that. Uh, maybe it's more for singers, right? Like I was like, maybe it's for some writers or something. But at the end, I went, and it was a great experience to meet the teachers. And they offered, they gave like a scholarship at the end of the program for the five week and I and I got it so mm. I got the scholarship and then I went to the to the five week uh, like months after and it was amazing because it was like my dream come true <laughs> to go to to Berkeley and to see the school and yeah and then after that uh, the Latin Grammys got like their first uh, a scholarship uh, mm -hmm. For, for 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 Berkeley like for the degree and you had to apply and do like essays and videos playing and a lot of stuff and I, I also I was very fortunate <laughs> to get it also so I got the first scholarship and it was uh, sponsored by uh, the pop star and Enrique Iglesias so he helped for for like my tuition and everything and and yeah that's how I how I I went to Berkeley. <laughs> Did you get to meet him or even play with him? I got to meet him a couple of times. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When when they gave me the scholarship, I, I met him and he was very nice. <laughs> and then I remember like, I think that year he came to play to Mexico and him invited my family to go. <laughs> and in Boston also, he played at the TD Garden and and he he invite, he he like gave me tickets for me and my friends and that was that's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so cool. So you were yeah. there. So you did your Berkeley degree in sixteen. Uh, yeah, like mm. 15, 16, Yeah, and then I graduated in two thousand nineteen, mm -hmm. twenty almost because of the pandemic and everything. Yeah. Right, and then and then you went back to Mexico City. 
yeah so yeah my my plan was initially of, of course like to to the opt and stay in the, in the us but it made more sense to to come back to mexico uh, when the pandemic started because yeah mm -hmm. yeah so now um i love to hear a little more about what you're doing now you play in different bands i suppose are you writing are you producing what's are you teaching what what, what are you yeah, so I guess I do a, a bunch of stuff, like many musicians. <laughs> uh, <Great>. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so when I, I came back to Mexico, like I didn't have like actually like a like a studio to record or anything. So it was like, a I guess, like a, a, a process like of, of getting there. So mm. at first I like I start teaching at a academy in Los Angeles, but because it was the pandemic, they allowed me to do it like remotely, like from oh. it, and it, it's owned actually by by Berkeley alumni, which is very cool. So I did that, uh, and then I, I I moved from where I was living, and now I have like a my my home studio, I guess, where I where I usually record. And what I mostly do is still teach there. Do, uh, do you still teach in LA remote or no? Yeah, I still do, and I have other students like in Mexico, and yeah, I like I still I I still teach, yeah, uh, but yeah, I also mainly do what what i did with you for example like to be like a, a session musician i guess when people need like a sax player or a solo here and there or or just for their projects like can you mm. write like riffs for this song or because sometimes also i i feel not all songwriters some of them but some writers they don't know how to write for woodwind instruments Right. Like it's very confusing, I guess, even for woodwind instruments, like the whole tr transposition thing, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? If you're not familiar to do it like on a regular basis, it can like confuse the brain <laughs> uh, for for tenor or for alto or for trumpet and the range also. Right. So sometimes when I record for people, I also help them write the parts or mm -hmm. do that kind of stuff. And then I guess during the pandemic, I got very interested in 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 production because uh, I guess now looking back, I wish I studied also production at Berkeley, which I didn't, but it's okay. Uh, it wasn't uh, the time, I guess. <laughs> but I I got very interested in, on on that part. So I've been I've been learning a lot of of how to to record instruments, to record, mm -hmm. like to do the production of tracks for tracks I do, for, like for my music or for other people. So I guess right now uh, that's what I'm mainly like focus and I, like the direction I wanna like pursue along as, like I would never stop playing the saxophone. <laughs> it's my, my instrument, uh, but I want to learn like production so yeah right and then you produce your own stuff or also people for uh, or stuff for other people too yeah so mainly most uh for example if i record m my saxophone parts I, I usually like some them already uh, with a little mix or something like i know how to do that mm. so it's easier uh so i'm not like back and forth like oh i want the saxophone more like this or less bright right. or right so and for my music of course and during the pandemic i also started working with a lot of visual artists from all over the world thanks to uh like i don't know if you've heard it's a little bit controversial i guess that topic but, but like the blockchain stuff uh so a lot of like artists that put their 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 art in 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 blockchain and some of them want to like uh, to do, to do like an audiovisual piece right so mm. some of them are not all but some in in museums right like where they because yeah so i guess now uh, art in that uh, area <laughs> has been like becoming more digital right so a lot of digital artists are now like emerging uh, and i've been doing a lot of music also for that for that stuff cool and and then how do you find these people then? Is is it through like forums or like NFT hubs? 
Yeah, so I I, I guess mainly Twitter. <laughs> like oh, a, lot of, wow. a lot of a lot of artists are there and they have like Twitter spaces sometimes. So so yeah, it's actually it's I don't think it's like a huge community. I guess it's like thousands of people, of course, all over the world. But like the mo like it's it's very easy like to because I didn't use Twitter before, but mm. It's very easy like to connect with with artists through that and I didn't know that so it's it's very interesting uh, and also some of my music it's also on the blockchain because I've, I've learned a lot about it uh, and it's cool because it's it's I think it's more uh, approachable than sometimes Spotify or things like that. I think also Quincy Jones was gonna like open like a like a platform for musicians for mm -hmm. using Tesos or something. I think he was doing that with the help of other musicians. But that's the yeah. So it's very interesting. So I think so it's, it's in the works. It's, oh, that's it's 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 gonna like happen in a more like large uh, way. Maybe not as how it's branded right now as NFTs, but maybe as another way of uploading your music there, I guess. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm sure, yeah. I don't know exactly when or how, but it's. It, I guess it's like a new technology that a lot of, a lot of people are using. Checking the, the Latin Grammys also uploaded like some uh, things you could get like through the blockchain in the last award. So I think Maybe it's something that's gonna happen. <laughs> and then how how what what would you advise people to in to study if they want to learn more about blockchain for art? Where, where do you go? Is it I mean it's not like you're gonna type blockchain into Google. Yeah. Or, <laughs> yeah. or where do you start? Uh yeah, that's a great question. Uh I would say like to get familiar first with the vocabulary because there, there's like a lot of vocabulary that we're not used to it. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, putting the art in the blockchain, it's called minting. And if you, you want to delete it, you can you, you burn it, <laughs> right? When you put the price on it, it's like you're swapping the piece. So mm -hmm. I guess like just the vocabulary, I would say it's the it's the first thing to understand. And then um, just learning how these different marketplaces work. Because most of them, I guess it's more like right now for visual artists, but mm -hmm. you can also upload like web files and a cover. So just like Spotify, I guess. So I guess just like mm -hmm. knowing different type of marketplaces and also like getting to know like the musicians that are already like, very visible there like musicians right. that are like selling a lot or like are are doing a lot of stuff there that that also i guess help uh, do you have yeah. a favorite platform like a favorite marketplace for it i guess i really like to use a uh, object it's called object.com uh, uh -huh. because they use like uh, tesos like currency is tesos and it's more like eco-friendly, I guess. <laughs> and that's actually Quincy Jones was gonna use that uh, not object but th that currency. And uh -huh. also, it's like way cheaper to 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 mint your stuff. Uh, and yeah, uh -huh. yeah, there are many. Like it's like a whole like a whole world. But also, I guess uh, as you ask in, uh, in in your question, like what like what uh, musicians could start learning. Uh, I guess like using other tools too because uh, artificial intelligence I guess is like a mm -hmm. big thing people is going to start uh, yeah. using uh, visual artists do that right like they they have like an AI for Photoshop and, and they just like include that yeah. into their artwork uh, and I guess it's interesting how musicians are going to start like using all this new technology Um without like being a musician of course like like if like if we're gonna keep like writing our own music i i guess and and maybe you're we're gonna keep like having like a mix engineer and a 
someone that makes the master and everything. But I think there are certain tools that we can start like like using uh, to explore our our creativity with that, which is mm. very cool. Mm -hmm. So you don't see it because there's people that are very upset about AI yeah. and they're like, yes. <laughs> oh, it's going to take over. How, how do you feel about yeah. that? You're you're more confident or more like in an explorative mode. And... Yeah, I, I, I guess my, my take, my personal view is that I, I would like to be open to this new technology, just like mm -hmm. we grew up with things like Ableton or, or Logic or, you know, like all these things that were in our computer, like even like to start making music on a MIDI keyboard and like maybe decades ago, you had to go to a studio only, like you couldn't record in your house, right? Like you yeah. couldn't as easily to get just like a, um, yeah, like your laptop, uh, Logic, some microphones and an interface and make an album if you know how to do it. You had yeah. to go like to record to a studio and it was very hard, like, like especially yeah. like I, I heard like interviews of rappers and, and those kind of guys. Like it wasn't easy like to get a studio time back totally. then. So I guess I kind of compare it to that. Like maybe this new technology is something that right now it feels like weird and awkward and we're not going to use it. But I think uh, uh, if we start learning it uh, faster, it's going to mm. get easier like for us as musicians in, in a few decades. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I'd love to hear a little bit more about your creative process and your approach to writing and producing, composing mm -hmm. uh, music or your yeah. art projects. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So, uh, yeah, I guess this whole world of, of like working with visual artists really pushed me to start writing my, my original music because before and during Berkeley, I guess I saw myself just as an instrumentalist, just like as a sax player and like to play in other people's projects. And it was very hard for me like to to put my ideas into into paper or to record something. And and, and yeah, I guess my, my creative process, it's a lot about creating like first like the bass. Like I, I never start with the saxophone lines. I always like create like a rather mm -hmm. like a piano, mm -hmm. a like the chords or like to produce like a drum part or something. Uh, uh -huh. And you start on the computer right away or you do learn on, on an instrument? I usually start on, on, on the computer, but actually like the all the effortless mastery stuff it really helps me to to be honest like if i if i go back to to my berkeley years and sometimes you're like i really remember this teacher or this teacher like something he said and and kenny like i already remember his his lessons it's it's it it really helps me <laughs> to like just be in 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 the space and be open to to like mm. there are no mistakes like you know like to lower the ego so like a, a little bit and be like it's okay yeah, to like, trust it yeah to trust like whatever like it's it's happening it's okay uh and yeah i think that's been like a very cool experience to just uh experiment with mm -hmm. like making longer tracks but also like making sometimes like shorter tracks but to finish them just like as ideas like i see it most like experiments like to know what do I like what instruments I like most mm -hmm. or if I'm working with a synth I also have some synths that I really like to use um yeah so I guess these years especially during the pandemic I, I've been like learning uh, like to see that I can also be a composer uh and and because before I, I was maybe I'm just like sax player, but I really want to like write my own music and, and I've been mm. doing that. So it's I guess it's 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 the I it's different. I think I heard it also one time in, in the global jazz or, or something like in a master class they did. Uh, like if the if you see yourself like as an instrumentalist or as a musician, right? Uh 
and and I want to like to see myself as a musician, <laughs> right? Like, yes. yeah, full ability. And and d describe your music to to me. Are you still like heavily focused on jazz, or you do electronic, or groove bay, or what's what styles are you? Um, yeah, I I think I I, because I love jazz, right? And and I. When I study my instruments, I, I do like the regular jazz stuff, I guess. Like I like to transcribe solos and uh -huh. and do that. But it's not as easily for me to write like uh like straight jazz songs. So I have friends that, that they're like very straight jazz musicians and, and their music it's like that, you know. For me, I I guess I'm more like influenced by by music by jazz musicians, but like more contemporary, like Mark Juliana, for example, mm -hmm. or um, Ben Wendell, who is like a very jazz musician, but also he has his knee body band. So right. I think I like something like in between. Yeah. Like a crossover. Yeah. Into a new era. Yeah, that's exciting. Yeah. I'd love to hear about a significant moment when your music had an impact on somebody's life or when you felt like now... I know why I make music. <laughs> uh, like a like a key like a key moment. Like yeah, if you uh, have one. Like a key moment of, like this is why I'm a musician. Like something like that. Yeah, or somebody. Your music had an impact in some mm -hmm. way. Yeah. Uh... I guess when I play live, I really, because also because of the pandemic, I guess I stopped playing live, like a lot of musicians. Uh, and just like the feeling, like when you finish a concert sometimes and it's like, oh, like I really like how it sounds or mm -hmm. it can tell you like anything, right? Like maybe like the drums were playing amazing or the solo you did here was cool and just like, when you see that you can bring that to other people because sometimes when we're playing our instrument or i don't know if mm. i've been to you singing uh, you're like i really love what i'm doing right but you never know like how other people feel and when they come to you and it's like i really enjoy you hearing play it's like oh i can it's not only for me you know like i can also make people like feel feel good for for a second or distract them from their daily lives right. I guess those those kind of moments, yeah, yeah, cool. Um, we talked earlier about like this this project with all the women. I'd love to ask you: Have you faced any stereotypes or biases being a female musician, and how do you challenge or overcome them? Yeah, I I sorry I misheard uh, this project with who? With all the women. Ah, with all the women. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. Uh, some challenges. Uh, I guess not necessarily like on the outside. Mm -hmm. uh, like I've not, I, I don't remember like a, a moment or, or at Berkeley, for example, I, I don't remember necessarily like a, a moment where I felt like less or like challenge for being a woman in a room necessarily from the outside. I guess it's more like in the inside, like so like I guess it's it's the um, what society sometimes teaches you. I don't know if it's mm. more like in a Latin country, it's more obvious. I don't know what like I guess like certain insecurities that I faced or maybe sometimes I keep facing, like just uh, being uh, not pressure, but like feeling less confident when I'm. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm playing, you know, like in in a in a all male context, sometimes or mm. or or sometimes I don't know how to to approach. Uh, I wouldn't say the jazz scene, but just in general, like being a musician. I don't know how how's that been for you. Well, I've I've always been surrounded with a lot of guys, yeah. so generally they think the girl is the singer I mean yeah and then are you being judged because you actually play amazing or because you're you look good or bad or 
I mean, there's so much. And generally, I still feel that, and, and I'm from the Netherlands, so that's yeah. even more different, right? I grew up in this in a society where where women equal it's it's still not ready mm -hmm. um but it's it's more equal than i would say in america mm. um and probably where you're yeah where you live, it's even <laughs> right. different right yeah. so the way you know to, to see if you know if you have a vision or you're like you really want to do something then sometimes you are seen as a, not a powerful entity but just as a you know as a bitch yeah yeah <laughs> right? totally. so if but you know maybe you're just doing your job right mm -hmm. you maybe just work hard and yeah maybe it's not, and in if i was a guy i wouldn't face that same pushback for just yeah. doing my job so I don't know. I I just realized more and more that there needs to be more openness in in equality and um yeah and respect as you see uh, yeah what you're saying it's it might be an internal thing right it's it's maybe just society and those those things just you know they they they're so subtle yeah right. The, but the, even if they're subtle, as you said, they're very real. Because if you're thinking about those, like if you have those those thoughts, it's happening. Even if no one says right. it, say say it in a room, for example, if they say, because I've been in situations like that when they can be like, "Oh, I really love how you play" or whatever, and sometimes I can be like, "Do you really like how I play, or I like you flirting with me, or like, like maybe some situations where it's how you grew up, like you don't really, like you're not entirely sure sometimes as a woman if it's like a real compliment, yeah, for you as a musician, because you you have to do your job, <laughs> or if it, or if it's like something else like in between the lines that you don't know how to read and if you say oh right. thank you like I don't know like situations where you don't really you never know how to uh, communicate or like how to act properly because right I don't know that, that you've been taught that yeah that, yeah are you gonna be one of the guys, right? Yeah. So or, or, or like true yeah, to who, true to who you actually are, and just be natural about it. Um, yeah. Yeah, but you know, it's easy to find a female singer, but how many female drummers do we know, or right. how many female mixing engineers, or you know, even tenor saxes? That you know, there's yeah. not there's more guys playing that instrument. Yeah. And, women are just as good yeah. <laughs> because it just all depends on the person and how much time they and the energy they invest and where they play from and how, how do we, you know there's no yeah it's it's sometimes it's like oh we need more women no we need to just have women available v visual so they yeah. they can be asked yeah right and um, it's easier to just ask a guy if in a band with all boys. I don't know. So, yeah. yeah. And I guess also, like, not necess not only, like, for us, like, how, as women, we act in the music industry, like, for our own, for our benefit. But also, I guess men have to also learn how to 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 work with a woman because sometimes yeah. I feel they they are they don't really know <laughs> how to communicate like uh, professionally with right. with woman and be like okay yeah she's a drummer yeah she's an engineer and and doesn't matter if, if she's a woman yeah. that I should treat her as yeah. equal in in a well, professional it, setting yeah well just in general it's clear that we as women we go on a stage and we have to think about what to wear yeah and the guys don't yeah right 
they just go on stage they don't they're they i mean they can be busy with what they look like but generally it's not an assignment yeah right it's not society pressuring you to wear a dress that's nice or to look good or like stress about you know sometimes i go on stage and i'm not worried about music i'm just like what should i wear yes <laughs> right yes <laughs> and i mean that's that's obviously society right? yeah and that creates for different approaches of how you deal with people and how you're being yeah objectified sometimes and how you, or you, not taking wait. seriously and then if you want to put your voice in then you have to put a little force to make sure you're heard and then that's not yeah i mean i've i mean during these these all these podcasts i've heard a lot of bad stories about people yeah. running into different situations that were just not fair how's your really... experience now teaching at berkeley Outside it's been that. great i've been yeah. teaching for a couple of years now and the students are i i love it it's i have a lot of students and i teach them how to be free and how to uh, enjoy their instruments and um, i'm also a psychologist uh, i oh. don't know if you know but i no. have my bachelor i got a couple of degrees i got my bachelor and master <laughs> in clinical psychology i got a degree in the conservatory in the netherlands from uh, choir conducting and then in the wow. daytime I worked as a therapist and in the evenings I was a choir conductor and then I went to Boston to study more wow. singing and I was in the global program and at the end I meet Kenny so my last semester was Kenny's first semester in 2015 for 15 so I've been working on growing his institute for uh, nine years and yeah. work I worked for him personally as well growing the brand effortless mastery but uh yeah I came to realize that it was um yeah it was better for me to quit what advice would you give aspiring musicians who are just starting out their career or their musical journey yes uh, that's a great question uh recently recently a friend was here like she came visit to me from mm -hmm. from new york too and there there was something she said that really stuck into my mind during these past weeks and it's like to be unique you know like to all like to don't be i i would say to don't be afraid of knowing who you are you know like being proud of the things you like as a musician, mm. the styles that you want, the musicians you like, uh, the even if you don't really know which path you're gonna take, especially when you start playing music, we don't really know, and it always changes when you keep growing as a musician. Right. But I guess like stay like true. I know it's like a cliche, but it but it's really it's it's really true like i i'm starting to learn <laughs> that <laughs> to don't be afraid of, of this is me this is how i play mm. right now <laughs> and this is this is me right and and because sometimes especially in jazz like jazz is such a beautiful music but it's also like a very challenging place to be because of all this because you want to play like the masters but also you want to play maybe like you're the other students that play better than you and all the time it's like am I am I good enough am I doing this right like you know so many voices and I guess just like to to really understand and care who you are for who you are mm. as a musician and 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 bring the best out of it right like that's something I tell a lot of my students my, my young students I have a lot of like girl young students so I'm very like I always tell them like like be proud of of, of, of who you are you know like when you're playing your instrument it's it's you who you are playing and even if it's the same note no one is gonna like sound like you you know and, and like embrace embrace that uh, right. and that's I guess I guess that <laughs> yeah yeah I really like that yeah to not be afraid of yourself and or not be afraid of being different yeah 
Yeah. And just embracing your true self. It's, it's, I mean, the whole concept of your true self is a little tricky because then if you aim for being your true self, then there is a risk that you project your true self on the, you know, the, the person that you want to be, which is oh. then getting into the way of actually going where you want to go. Yes. <laughs> right. So yeah, saying you're, I want to be my tr- authentic self. That's a little tricky, but yeah, just trusting what's there. Um, yeah. And yeah, I talk with my classes. I talk a lot about self-compassion, uh-huh. um, which I prefer over self-esteem. Uh-huh. Right. Because if we say you need to be good, you need to, you know, just trust it. You are great. Then you create self-esteem, which then leads to everybody wanting to be the best. Yeah, that's so and you, true. And that's not possible because if everybody's the best and there's no best, then everybody's great, but not the best, right? Yeah. It's technically impossible. And then we just create this really uncomfortable feeling where we don't or a narcissistic society, right? Where everybody needs to be the best and there's yeah. this elbow situation. And so instead of self-esteem, you you can teach or, you know, develop more self-compassion where you're okay with who you are and you just become your own best friend saying, oh, I feel you. Yeah. This is happening and this is what we're doing now. And it's yeah. okay. Yeah, you're right. I guess like when I say like being authentic, like it makes a lot of sense now that you said that when when I mean like being authentic, I mean like showing yourself, like showing up, of course, to mm. yourself, it, regardless if you're feeling like, for example, insecure or not right. good enough or like, you know, like because sometimes I I. I used to not like release music, for example, because like years ago on the pandemic or in my life, because <laughs> it was like, maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe it's not perfect, you know, like that, those mm. kind of feelings. And now I'm like learning to be like, just like, it's like more compassionate, right? Like, like I'm in mm. this process and this is who I am right now. And I'm putting this out and this is who mm. I am. Like, like, like being authentic in the sense, like, not being like the best always you know like and showing your best self always but being authentic in the sense of some days I don't feel great and some days I have like a lot of insecurities about being a musician some days Mm -hmm. I feel okay this sounds good like it always changes right every day we wake up feeling different uh, but like being authentic with that (laughs) I guess yeah Yeah. oh I really like that yeah well put um How about this question? Um, How do you navigate the balance between staying true to your vision and the music that you want to make and meeting maybe commercial expectations or paying the bills? How do you keep like at it? Yeah, I think for me and my personal experience, uh, I I really love the saxophone, I guess. Like I, I really love my instrument uh it's been it's been phases where i'm more disconnected to it for things but but i realized that after many years of playing i I really love the instrument so Mm -hmm. teaching i think it's something that i really enjoy and i don't i do it a lot for for the love of the instrument that i have and less like for like for i need to pay the bills you know so i i i do enjoy teaching because i i like saxophone because I really and music in general because I really like when when they come to the lesson and it's like I really like the saxophone but I don't know how it it works you know and I really want to play this melody and I can see the people that that they get so happy like it's something that Mm. brings something to their to their life you know like even regardless of their level beginners or more advanced you know but it brings something so I guess like for for me at least teaching has been like helping me a lot to stay like true to to the music and don't do something outside right now so so I I guess I balance a lot of things uh, when I'm teaching like I I focus on my students and I I want to help them as much as Mm -hmm. I can 
And then I have like a certain amount of hours in the day that I am like, okay, I'm free and I don't I, I don't need to I can I can be myself and just like compose for this amount of time and, and see what happens and, and, and don't care too much about that. So I guess I the balance it's like my love for <laughs> For the instrument, maybe is mm -hmm. what sometimes helps me to pay more stuff, uh, and my love also for art. I guess like now that I'm be working with visual artists, I love art like in general. Like I I, I love painting and different types of of art, uh, and the expression like people mm. like finding themselves through art, uh, and if I'm working making music. For someone's piece, I I really enjoy that also, like helping them grow their vision or on something. So I think that helps me, like it comes back, it like it goes like forward and backwards to right. to what I do. So then when I'm working on 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 my pieces, I have like more freedom, I guess, of of time and and just be myself. <laughs> I don't know if it's like a very confusing yeah, no, answer, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Where do you see yourself in the future? What's what's your dream? What's what's uh, or what's coming up? What's what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess I guess the same the same answer like what's coming up and 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 what I want to do. <laughs> it's a uh, keep keep playing, like keep developing myself as a musician keep like figuring out who I am as a composer like making my mm. music uh, releasing my music um, and I want to play also like in other people's projects yeah just like I, I guess my dream is to become like I guess now I'm like a professional musician but in my mind <laughs> with my <laughs> with my insecurities and, and everything that we've talked about before uh, I want to become like a like a like a good musician I guess that's 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 my dream <laughs> yeah which we're always doing it like a step by step right like right yeah I guess but we're always growing. yeah I guess my yeah my my dream maybe it's like to <laughs> to be more mindful like to be more like to use more mindfulness in in my in my music career so I'm not always mm. thinking like yeah it's it's like a balance you want to have like big dreams of course but you also want to be in the moment and to enjoy right. what it's happening so yeah to sum it up <laughs> I would say like they like keep making music great do do great music and and play with with a band with my band my music and other people's projects um yeah go back to the u.s i guess it's something that i that i want to do to maybe move to have you have you been back though have you traveled visit after, after the pandemic no i haven't no so i guess my 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 more realistic dream right now it's to to get a, like an artist visa or, or a job teaching or something that i can that that can allow me to go back to the states and 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 keep develop myself as a musician and and a producer. I also want to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, it's been a pleasure to talk to you. Um, <laughs> Same. It's so nice to meet you again. Uh, <laughs> keep me updated on anything. I'd love to hear from you more. And uh, yeah, thank you for being on the podcast. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vivian. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy you're doing this with, with the musicians that play on your album. And yeah, I want to keep in touch too. Let me know how this podcast goes. And I'm, I'm looking forward to what's coming up next for you too, for your music and this project. Thank you. <laughs> As I conclude this episode of Vivi Talks, I want to express my sincere gratitude for joining me in this musical journey. I hope you enjoyed exploring the stories and experiences of the incredible female musicians on my album. To stay updated on our latest episodes, subscribe to Vivi Talks on your favorite podcast platform. Connect with me on social media through Viverture and please check out my album type of thing. 
a musical exchange featuring 100 female musicians to empower female cacao farmers of the Runga State Park in Congo. It's about more than just music. It's about making a positive impact in the world. Your support is part of that journey, so thank you once again for tuning in. Until next time, keep celebrating the power of music and let's continue to amplify the voices of remarkable women in the industry. Stay inspired, stay empowered, and keep the music flowing. With love and gratitude, till soon.